Hey, this is Ace Lewis, and I'm doing this video because many people didn't have been asking how to securely back up the um, their zero name ID or zero ID. So what we're going to use in this tutorial is Veracrypt. Veracrypt is a fork of TrueCrypt, and it's an encryption software to encrypt hard drives or files. Uh, so what we're going to do is download it. Once you've downloaded it, you need to set it up. So now it's installed. You can make a donation if you want. So we'll finish. Um, we can, yeah, we'll view the tutorial. Oh, maybe not. So we'll open up Veracrypt. And we need to create a volume. So I'll, we'll create an encrypted file container. We're going to just go into and make a standard Veracrypt volume and not a hidden one. But a hidden one allows you to have two passwords for the same file. And what one of the passwords can actually open a different part of the file. So it's a little bit more complicated, but we don't need to do that. So what we're going to do is select a file. I'm going to put it in my zero bundle. And then I'll call it zero ID backup. Or backup. So now we'll save that. We'll go next. Doesn't really matter too much what encryption you're using. AS could be all right. And you can also do like Serpent Two Fish AS. Uh, this means it does all these types of encryptions. So you can also test to see what it is. But in this case, for this, um, we're just gonna leave, I'll leave it as the default. What we're gonna do is make uh, a volume, let's only make it like five megabytes or 10, doesn't really matter. Go next. I'll put in a password. So password one, two, three. Now, obviously don't use password one, two, three as a password. This is just an example. Uh, it's probably recommended and the, they recommend using a password that's 20 characters or more and um, what you should do is take a few random words and use those um, because what people can do is try loads and loads and loads of passwords really quickly so if you have a long password that stops them from brute forcing your password or at least limits them heavily so go next This is telling me that my password is too short. This is only exact. This is not a, a real thing. So I'm just using password one two three. You move your mouse around randomly, and this makes sure that the little seed that they use here is more random than it would be. So just move it around loads. Uh, you can, and then you just click format. So it's done now, and then we have the Veracrypt volume. So now we can actually mount a volume on, let's mount it on, choose a letter, select the file that we did. So that was in zero bundle, zero backup, no mount. And then when we mount, it's going to ask us for the password. Depending on the encryption that you use, like if it was just AS or is it AS and the other ones, it might take a little longer or a little shorter here. And now on drive F, to so open up my computer and then go to this PC, we'll have a local disk F, which is a 10 megabyte disk. So on this disk, we'll store the information 
to back up the ID. So if you go to your Zero bundle, then you go to Zero Net, then go to Data. This users.json is the file that you need to back up your Zero ID. So what we're going to do is copy this, go over to the local disk, which is the TrueCrypt or sorry VeraCrypt document, and then we'll paste it over here. So now we've got a back, backed up users.json. So what I'll do now is dismount. So now the drive F is no longer here. And then we have a, the file. If we go into zero bundle, we have a backup file. I 10 megabytes is a bit too big. But this file, what you should do now is then save this file online. So put it on Dropbox, put it on OneCloud or OwnCloud or, or OneDrive or Mega, or even email it to yourself, put it on Google Drive. And then that means that even if your computer crashes or your hard drive fails, you'll still have your zero ID back, backed up to the cloud. And then all you need to do is get that file as shown here, you then mount it, you put in the password, it will then unencrypt the file. So you will have the mountable space. Then you do the total opposite of what we did in that in just. So we go to F, we'd copy the users.json to the new zero bundle in the same position. So, um, and then that's the users.json backed up. I hope this video was simple enough for you to follow. I have two other videos, one showing how to register a dot bit address. And also I have another video of how to actually get Namecoin for free so you can register that dot bit address for free and I'll put those two videos on screen now. Of course if you like the video I'll really appreciate if you hit the like button and also if you want to view more high quality content like this in the future be sure to subscribe. Thanks this is Ace Lewis and see you.